Edgar said to the interviewer he was convinced that the thing out there was in a vault. Yeah, I know what he thought. Dr. Edgar's didn't think it was designed to keep things out. I know what he, he thought. He thought it was designed to keep something in. Do you even understand the difficulty trying to keep a base like Fathom at the bottom of the ocean from killing everyone in it on a daily basis? Oh my god. Everyone hold on to something. I think whatever is on the other side of that door out there, it's not friendly. I think it's trying to get out. That, my friend, is a dire combination. That's a bad sign. Get out of the door! It's spreading like some kind of technological contagion. We can either stop it here or watch the world burn. Fathom, the first season of Derelict. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Or learn more at derelictpodcast.com. Hi, this is Rob Benedict. And I am Richard Spate. We were both on a little show you might know called Supernatural. It had a pretty good run. 15 seasons, 327 episodes. And though we have seen, of course, every episode many times, we figured, hey, now that we're wrapped, let's watch it all again. And we can't do that alone. So we're inviting the cast and crew that made the show along for the ride. We've got writers, producers, composers, directors, and we'll, of course, have some actors on as well, including some certain guys that played some certain pretty iconic brothers. It was kind of a little bit of a left-field choice in the best way possible. The note from Kripke was, he's great, we love him, but we're looking for, like, a really intelligent Duchovny type. With 15 seasons to explore, it's going to be the road trip of several lifetimes. So please join us and subscribe to Supernatural then and now. Vultures over low doves. An 11th hour audio production. Written by Justin Mullane. Starring Michael McClokin and Shauna Carmody. Oh, God, it's Shelly. She can't see me like this. Oh, man. Hide me. Hide you? Where? I don't know. You're 30 years old. For Christ's sake. Why are you trying to hide? Because I look like an idiot standing here holding this chicken. She's so beautiful. I don't know what to say to her. How about something like, hey there, Shelly. How about we go for a pint in the pub? How long are you going to keep running from her? I'm not running. Stay there and wait for her then. I'm not ready. Oh, I don't know, man. How about you duck into the bathroom? I've never felt more confident and, and strong in my life. I finally feel like I'm in control. And it feels... It feels fantastic. I look back and I can't believe I'm the same guy. I'm not. I'm a new man and I deserve good things. <laughs> I'm debt free and a better job and... And well, the ladies can't get enough. I owe it all to Dr. Maidenthorpe. Hello, I'm Dr. Maidenthorpe, and I've been helping people, good people like you, achieve a sense of control over their lives for 30 years. Schedule an appointment today. Gary! It's Madison, Gary! Bring down your trash! Hello! Oh. Well, 
Last night, another grisly murder took place. 43-year-old Melissa Brock was found dead this morning in the Brundle West building on Main Street. That's right, John. The employees are being sent home today as the authorities investigate. Police have not released any details yet, but sources say that Brock was found in a men's room stall by the building custodian Fred Bates when he came to work this morning. Mr. Bates is being held for questioning, but it is unclear at this time if he is under suspicion. Still unknown if there's a link between this homicide and the brutal murder of 28-year-old Andrew Cole. Now, Gary, it's Wednesday. Remember, our Euchre game is after work. Were you drinking last night? No. Stop sniffing me. I gotta go to work. I told you, I don't want you drinking. You'll get jaundice from cirrhosis and die like that loser <coughs> Uncle Ken. Ken was not a loser! The damn government! He was a loser, Paul, and my gear bear will not end up like him. Get up, Paul. Keep it up. Calm down, Paul. You don't want your COPD to act up. Gary, did you ask your boss about the insurance yet? Not yet. You will have to know whether the treatment is covered soon. The Daversons offer one of the best health plans in town, Ma. You know how much that Daversons estate is worth? And greedy sons of bitches better have the best health plan in the state. Look, I gotta go, okay? I'm gonna be late, and if I'm fired, there won't be any insurance coverage to ask about. Don't forget your lunch! I made you a liverwurst on pumpernickel sandwich! Morning, morning, Bill. Why didn't you clean up that oil spill I told you to take care of last night? I did. You did, huh? If that's your definition of clean, I need to see what the inside of your shorts look like. I, I put the clay stuff on there and then... Gary, there's still a puddle back there. Then you said to go and do the trimming. Look, it's pretty simple. That back there is a safety hazard. Do you understand? Yes. I need to know that you're capable of understanding the difference between a hazard and that shit you do outside and call trimming. Look, I'm tired of wiping your ass, boy. When you're done over there, you go work in the nursery. <sighs> hey, Gary. Did you get a good look at Shelly Daverson while you were out there whacking? The boss's daughter, Gary. She's a little out of your league, don't you think? No. No, he says. It wouldn't be so hard on you if you just do what he says. I did what he said. It's his oil. He spilled it. Why can't he clean up his own mess? What was that, Gary? Oh. Uh, hmm? uh, You're developing a spine over here? Well, well. Look who finally decided to crawl out of his diapers and arrive for work. <laughs> okay, big guy. Tell you what. I'll go clean up my mess. You get to take this shovel and head out back. We're installing a new irrigation system next week. There's a trench that needs to be dug back there, and it's got your name on it. What? You think you're a tough guy? Then get your ass out there and dig that damn trench. I don't want to see your face. Tough guy. That helps. I'm getting really sick of people telling me what to do. Gary? They want me to dig a damn hole. Fine. Gary. What now? Sorry. I was just... Am I... No, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were... I'm looking for the key to the nursery. But I see I've interrupted. So I'll just go find Bill. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Oh, hey, Adam. Ma needed help with my dad's nebulizer. You know, you sound kind of stressed, man. Everything cool? Yeah, everything's cool. Keep watching the light, Gary.
back and forth, back and forth. Gary, when you're ready, I want you to think about Adam. Adam? That's right, Gary. Do you think you can try today? Sure. I'll try, Dr. Maidenthorpe. I want you to picture Adam. Okay. How old is he? He's 30. The same age as me. Now, Gary, picture Adam the way he looked the last time you saw him. Okay. What does he look like? He's so young. You make decent money. You have good benefits. Is the work really that bad? I don't care about the money, Doc. Then why don't you just quit? You could find another landscaping job. I carry my parents' insurance. With Dad's COPD and all my mom's medications, I need this job. By your description, your boss is not an easy man to keep happy. How do you know he won't fire you? He won't fire me. They're too cheap to pay unemployment. Maybe you can drop a headstone on him. I think you mean Anvil? At least I get to see Shelley. What are you two doing up? Where were you, Gary? I had an appointment. You missed Euchre. It's just a game, Ma. Maybe you should find a new partner. That's not the point. People are dying out there, Gary. You've been gone all night without so much as a phone call. I doubt anyone would do me the favor. Oh, don't say such an awful thing. Are you drunk? Drunk's a relative term, Pops. All right, that's enough. I want you out of here. Oh, he's just a boy. He's 30 years old, for Christ's sake. You have one month to straighten your shit out. Go get a goddamn life. Do something other than get high in the attic. Go do something with your life, God damn it. <laughs> Go get a life. <laughs> Is that what you said? I'd love to get a life ball, but no, I'm stuck here. That's not bad enough, though. No, I get to listen to the two of you all day, every day, complaining about how nothing I do is ever good enough. <laughs> One month. That's about how long you're going to make it without my insurance covering your bi-weekly appointments. Oh, are you okay? Oh, he'll be fine. He'll do him some good to get his heart rate up. Paul, he can't breathe. Gary, Gary, he can't breathe. Call the ambulance. I'm going to my room. Gary! Gary! We're grinding down the dogs now. You shit for me. Ravens, Gary, you and I fly high over the dogs. We're forever deemed as vultures. But we still have work to do, Gary. Morning, Ma. <clears throat> Not talking? Look, I know you're still upset, but 50 years of smoking killed Dad, not me. Suit yourself. I'll be home late. Now, I need you to polish a slab of granite. You're just gonna stand there and stare at me? With <laughs> Just finished, Bill. Just like you wanted. You uh, want to inspect my work? <laughs> How'd I do? <laughs> You're being too hard on yourself, Gary. Your anxiety undermines your self-actualization. Your ability to see yourself as an independent, capable human being. I can't trust myself. That's why we're here. Relax, Gary. Breathe deep.
Picture yourself in your safe place. Nothing can threaten you there. Now repeat after me. I am now in control. I am now in control. I can get what I want. I can get what I want. I can have love. I can have love. I can let it out. I can let it out. I want to talk about Adam. <laughs> Let's talk about Adam. I've been thinking about your problem with the young Miss Davison. Shelley? What about her? I think it's time to resort to more drastic measures. You mean shock therapy? No, no. N nothing quite as drastic as all that. Well, not for you. I don't understand. Your mind will tell you when you're ready to know. We've been working together for a while now, Gary. What made you finally ask me out? I don't know. I guess I finally got smart and told myself to stop hiding, stop running, you know? You're different somehow. It sounds like you're doing better. Better? You were so angry the other day. Oh, that. Yeah. Please don't take that personally. I was having an awful day and you got caught in the crossfire. And today? Today? Today I'm a whole new man. Well, thank you for dinner. I've had a great evening. Me too. My friends say I spend too much time in the nursery. They're worried I'm turning into a playlist. I love watching you in the nursery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Would you mind dropping me off at the nursery? I have some things to grab for the butterfly garden. You got it. <laughs> it would save me the walk. No problem. I can wait and take you to the house if you like. Really? Thank you so much. That would be great. I'll be right back. <sighs> Adam, where have you been? I tried calling. The date? Yeah, it, it went great. Yeah, yeah, okay, you were right. She is very, very human and as beautiful as I always thought she was. The number you have dialed is not in service. Please check the number and dial again or call your operator for assistance. Oh, we went to Fulci's for dinner and then we just walked around and talked all night. The number you have dialed is not in service. Please check I the number. I finally did it, buddy. Again, or call your operator. Okay, okay, you were right. You were right all along. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. You know this has to end here, Gary. Why? <laughs> Why? You're not ready. I deserve good things. I can choose to let it out. I can choose... But she hasn't done anything wrong. It's not about her, Gary. You know that. It's about what you need to get well. I am worthy of love. Soon, Gary. Soon. But first... We have more work to do. All right. What do I have to do? In the trunk, you will find a duffel bag. Inside the bag, you will find a pair of gloves. Put them on. Good. Now the tape. Make sure it works. is in the sheath. Take it. Close the trunk. Someone moved all the fertilizer and the good shovel is missing. I'm sorry, Shelly. Is everything all right? 
I am significant. I am significant. I know. I didn't mean to be rude. I can take what I, I can want. Take what I want. Gary, what are you talking about? See, Gary, she's just like the rest of them, isn't she? She doesn't want you to get better. She thinks you're weak, Gary. I wanted to be good enough for you, Shelley. I don't understand. I just wanted you to see me. Don't let her make that call, Gary. Drop it. You're just like the rest of them. Placid little doves. Wallowing and cooing in your perfect little worlds. Never even noticing the vulture circling above. Ravens, Gary. We're ravens. You and I. Ah! You're being too easy on her, Gary. Let go of your fear. No. Looks like I forgot to pick up after the job was done. Hey, fellas. Phil is going to be awfully disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Gary? Get up off the ground. Who is in control, Gary? I am in control. That's what you think. His heart stopped. Get the defib on him now. Get these people out of the way. Clear. We've got him. He's back. He's back. He's coming too. Welcome back, Gary. There is still work to be done. <laughs> You've been listening to Vultures Over Low Doves, an 11th hour audio production. Written by Justin Moline. Starring Michael McWilkin and Shauna Carmody. Featuring Rich Wentworth, Steve Schneider, Brian Lincoln, Sarah Golding, Matthew McLean, Owen McEwen, Robert Cudmore, Sibby P. Wheeland, Matthew J. Boudreaux, Pete Lutz, Katie Falvey, and David Jarvis. Original score by John Carl Toth. Music by Matthew and Javert Boudreau, VWT, and Ithaca Studios. Dialogue editing by Eli McElveen. Sound design and editing by Matthew J. Boudreau. Script editing and artwork by Monique Boudreau. Production crew includes Henry Wentworth, Matthew J. Boudreau, Fred Greenhalge's Road NT4, Rich Wentworth, Scott Hickey, Brian Lincoln, Pete Lutz, Audrey Wentworth, Javert Boudreau, Steve Schneider's Shovel, The Watermelon, Rebecca White, Mr. Body, and Katie Falvey. 11th Hour Audio would like to thank Mill No. 5 in Lowell, Massachusetts for their support. To learn more about this unique location and to see a list of their upcoming events, visit mill5.com. Welcome to the small town of Chinook, where faith runs deep and secrets run deeper. In this new thriller, religion and crime collide when a gruesome murder rocks the isolated Montana community. Everyone is quick to point their fingers at a drug-addicted teenager, but local deputy Ruth Vogel isn't convinced. She suspects connections to a powerful religious group. 
enter Federal Agent V.B. Loro, who has been investigating a local church for possible criminal activity. The pair form an unlikely partnership to catch the killer, unearthing secrets that leave Ruth torn between her duty to the law, her religious convictions, and her very own family. But something more sinister than murder is afoot, and someone is watching Ruth. Chinook, starring Kelly Marie Tran and Sanaa Lathan. Listen to Chinook wherever you get your podcasts. If you want a person dead, you call a hitman. If you want a monster dead, you call Lincoln Franks. But you better be able to pay the price he asks because Lincoln doesn't work for free. Pay to slay, bitches. Slay Season 2 is the current season of Scott Sigler Slices, a fiction podcast with dark tales hacked from the mind of a number one New York Times bestselling author. Slay is a foul-mouthed, monster-killing, drug-addled anti-hero story that's John Wick meets Buffy meets Breaking Bad. Slay Season 1 is complete and waiting for you in the feed, as is Scott's short story anthology, Blood is Red. Scott Sigler Slices is the world's longest-running fiction podcast, 19 years and counting, with new episodes dropping every Sunday. Get Scott Sigler Slices on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.